In this tutorial we're going to look at how to crochet the front row and the back row of the envelope border. We always start with the back row when we're creating our envelope border and therefore we start with the back of the fabric facing us. The back of the slip stitch row looks like a line of horizontal bars and this is where we need to insert our hook into the um, stitches so that we can work our back border from here. So using colour A and a 4.5mm hook, I insert my hook into that um, first stitch. It's quite difficult to get in sometimes, so do uh, push and persevere. And I'm creating three chain to start with. And then I'm going to treble into each of the back the stitches. Remember this is the back stitches and they are a little bit tight to get into. You can see I'm struggling a little bit getting in here. Remember that I'm working in UK terms so my treble in the UK is going to be a double crochet in the US. It's really important that you do the first row of the back border first because um, as you can see it is quite hard to get your hook into these little stitches and if you do the front border first, it makes it even harder to get your um, hook into these stitches. So don't be lulled into thinking, oh, it'll be easier to do the front row, we'll do that first, because it will make your back border first row doubly difficult. When you get to the corner, you can see the two chain from the slip stitch row, and we're going to work into the centre of the first chain and we're going to work two trebles into this AM chain. Once we've worked our two trebles into the first chain we're then going to chain two to get round the corner and work two more trebles into the second chain. So the corner stitch will be two trebles into the first chain, two chain and then two trebles into the second chain. So just to go through that again, it's two trebles into that first corner chain, then two chains, and then two trebles into the second corner chain. And once you've worked those two trebles, make sure it's the first stitch that you pick up and not the chain again. You can see here I nearly picked up the chain again, but it was the first stitch that I went into. You're now going to carry on doing a treble into each of the back of the slip stitches down the side. It's a little bit easier to go down the side here actually because the slip stitches are slightly larger. So carry on doing your trebles into each of the slip stitches, into the back of the slip stitches down the side of this row. Continue working your trebles all the way around your afghan, remembering when you get to the corners you're working two trebles into the first chain and then two chain and then two trebles into the second chain and when you get to the end we're going to join with an invisible stitch. Snip the yarn off leaving a generous amount that we're going to use for our invisible stitch. We're going to thread up a big eyed needle or a darning needle. Then we need to identify the stitch that we're going to use. It is the first treble stitch we're using, not the chains. It's actually that first treble stitch, that V of the first treble. Insert your needle in through both the front and back loops of that first treble. And then you're going to insert your needle through the centre of the last stitch you created. And there we go, a lovely invisible stitch, you just cannot see it. It actually sits above the three 
initial chain you created at the beginning and then just finish off by weaving in your ends. Now we've finished the first row of the back border, we're now ready to go and work the first row of the front border. So here's our front border pattern and the pattern tells us where we're starting at that red block. So counting our chain it's one, two, three, four in from the corner. So if we look where my hook is and then we're going to count here, one, two, three, four. So there we go, four stitches in. Now we've identified the stitch we're starting at, we are going to pull the yarn through and create a chain stitch to fix it. And then we're going into the top loop only of our next stitch and we're creating double crochet stitches all the way along. So it's a top loop only, it's quite difficult to get into, but keep going and then we're going to create our double crochet stitches. Remember that I'm working in UK terms, so my double crochet will be a single crochet in the US. Keep working those double crochets into the slip stitches until you get to the corner. When you get to the corner, Two corner chains from the slip stitch row already have two trebles worked into them from the back border. However, we are going to crochet a double crochet into the same loop. Then we create two chain and double crochet into the next corner chain, again into the same space as the two trebles. And this will give a nice continuous row of colour from our slip stitch um, round all the way round our afghan. And then after the corner we're able to pick up the next stitch and double crochet all the way round until we get back to that very first stitch where we're ready now to create an invisible stitch with the very first double crochet that we created. The same as in our back border, snip off your yarn and leave a generous amount to create that invisible stitch. Thread your needle ready to create your invisible stitch. So we're going to go through the top of that very first double crochet, not the chain, the double crochet, and we're going through both the front and the back loops and pulling our yarn reasonably tight and then we're going to insert our needle into the very last stitch we created through the centre of it and again pulling our yarn reasonably tight and then we are going to weave our yarn into the back so that we can actually lose the yarn and we have a beautiful invisible stitch in our double crochet at the front as well as our treble crochet at the back. So you should now have a row of double crochet at the front and a row of treble crochet at the back with all those pesky end of row yarn trapped between the two. We now have completed that first row in both back and front borders as well as our slip stitch round. So we're now ready to look at the first section of our three section border. And I'll be discussing the amounts of stitches that we should be starting with before we start the pattern in the next video.